Hello guys, hello, 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 hello again. Uh, it's me. For the last time today, we are closing our seven day series. Wow, I can't imagine. It's day seven of unlocking your full potential and it's the last day of the series. I'm so excited that I've traveled with you this long. I'm so excited that I've been able to bring um, a testimony about myself and what God is busy doing in my life. And I want to promise you that far greater things are yet to happen in your life. Far greater things are going to come into your life. Hallelujah. So, uh, good afternoon, wherever you are. And thank you very much for tuning in. Please, I am begging you, remain tuned in. Invite everybody else. Tell people that uh, Reverend Moses is online. Right now, we are um, dealing with this um, seven-day series, and today is the last day um, where we're saying unlocking your full potential. Hallelujah. And I'm saying to you, you are um, destined for great things. God created you for a purpose, and I want to tell you today, that purpose is going to change your life and that purpose is going to change everybody's life around you. Amen. So I just want to say to you, uh, thank you very much. If um, you have people that you know who have had an opportunity uh, to watch the series, it's still there on Facebook. You can go through the series uh, starting on day one. You can see all of it up to the last day. And please take notes because it's going to make a difference in your life. I'm a little bit under um, the wind today, but uh, please bear with me. I'm not at my best. Um, I'm kind of feeling down. I don't know what's going on, but please do bear with me. And let's, you know, fight the devil together. Let's fight the good fight. Amen. Let's, let's, let's win together. Uh, let's, let's press on together because it doesn't matter uh, how low you started, how weak you started, but the most important thing is how you finish. And we're going to help each other to finish strong. Let us pray. Let me pray with you today as we open this last session. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that, God, you allowed us once more um, to partake in your wonderful blessing, which is the day that you have blessed us with. Uh, thank you, Lord, that you have granted us um, this awesome mandate to represent you um, in your people, where your people are concerned. You said this to Peter, and you said, Simon Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. And now, oh God, today we know that you have given us this mandate, even though we are unworthy, but you have made us worthy. Even though we are sinful creatures, but you have purified us. You have cleansed us with the blood of Jesus and your grace allows us to represent you uh, in, 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 in the presence of your people. And today, oh God, I pray that you may um, really use me one more time. Um, I know I might not be reaching everybody, but to those who can hear my voice, I pray, oh God, that you may work miraculously in their lives, that this message may um, bring about change and excitement and rejuvenate, you know, excitement in their lives and renew um, the, the joy they once had. And I pray right now against talents that have been stolen by the devil. I pray against joy that has been stolen by the devil. I pray against, um, you know, love that has been stolen and confidence that have been stolen by the devil. I pray that your children may receive that which is due to them right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you that uh, you have allowed me one more time to come and present your word to your children. I pray that you bless it today and bless your children in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us again. Today, we are now on the last lap. Uh, we are now on the last lap of our series, guys. I'm closing the series today. Um, and then when the Lord 
allows me to come back again. I'll come back and continue with uh, another uh, topic or a series or a subject that we'll be discussing. Now, remember what we spoke about from the beginning um, of the series. I want to take you through quickly from the beginning and remind you what we've been talking about um, so that you, 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 can, you can be with me. And remember, in unlocking your greatest or your full potential, we said that nobody knows what you're capable of. Not even your parents know what you're capable of. Nobody. And I want to re-emphasize this, but I can't emphasize it more. That nobody knows what you're capable of except God. God knows because he created you with a purpose and he created you for a reason. And he knows very well um, what you are capable of and how, how far you can be stretched. So, and my, 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 my thought is that if God knows me better than anybody who knows me, then I would rather go to God for my life. If God knows me before he blessed me with a wife and he knows what kind of weaknesses I have and what kind of strength I have, then it means that when I feel down, when I feel that I am not living up to a purpose that God has, 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 has created me for, I have to go back to God and ask God to show me the way. And remember, he's not, he's not too far from you. He's always in there. He's always in there. If you accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, he is in there. He lives in, remember the name of Jesus, when he was prophesied, the prophet Isaiah, one of the major prophets, uh, prophet Isaiah who prophesied about um, the, the, the Messiah was coming. Um, he, he, he says that his name is Emmanuel, meaning that he is God with us. And in the book of Matthew, um, one of the disciples of Jesus, Matthew chapter 2, he says his name is Jesus, meaning that he came to save his own. So he's Emmanuel, meaning that he's God with us. So as soon as you allow Jesus, the Savior, to come into your life, he comes into your life not alone. But he comes into your life with the Father, the creator of all, the creator of everything that we see. He comes to Jeremiah in Jeremiah uh, uh, chapter 33 verse 3. He introduces him, himself to Jeremiah. He says, I am the maker of these, the founder of these. Hallelujah. Uh, this is what he says to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in prison right there in the dungeon. And he says to him, I am the founder. I am the one who has made everything that you see. And that is God. That is God. Wow. You, 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 your, your birth was not a mistake. We're talking, I'm introducing to you God who created you. God who knitted you together. He says, Jeremiah chapter 1, God who knitted you together and formed you in your mother's womb. In, 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 in the book of Genesis chapter 2, he says, When he created man out of dust of the earth, he breathed his breath into this uh, uh, um, dead being. And man became a living being. I am introducing you. God gave man a, a deep sleep so that out of man he takes a rib and forms it into a form of a woman and breathes into this form out of the rib and he introduced this woman to 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 to, to our forefather um, um adam and adam looks at the beauty of this woman and says this is the bone of my bones flesh of my flesh she shall be called a woman and the bible says god brought them together joined them together in a holy matrimony and they became one and then the bible says that which god has brought together let no man put asunder or that which god has brought together let no man separate oh hallelujah 
and you are the make you you are the the, the 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 clay in the hands of the potter god is the potter you are the clay you are the created of god wow you are the, the, the you know the masterpiece of God's hands. I don't care what challenges you're going through today. I don't care what disadvantages you have. I don't care what part of the world you were born or what part of the town you were born. I don't care. I don't care what, um, 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 you know, disadvantages or whatever. I don't care what you, what you're going through now. I am telling you, wherever you are, wherever you're from, whoever you are, even if you're a homeless person today, even if you have a disease, an incurable disease in your body, even if people are saying terrible things to you and about you, I want to tell you today, you are a special somebody. God created you for a reason and for a purpose. Your role in this whole situation is to find out what is your purpose on this earth this has nothing to do with church this has nothing to do with your name being written in the books of the church but this has everything to do with finding your purpose from the master god created you for a reason and 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 a lot of people who have been um you know uh, cursed uh, by by some Christian folks, a lot of people have been cursed um, due to you not meeting somebody's needs uh, or somebody's expectations. I want to say to you today, it doesn't matter who curses you. Nobody can curse that which God has blessed. Nobody, not even a pastor, not even me. I can't curse that which God has blessed. So God has blessed you. Created, you have been predestined the far greater things that God has in place for you. Remember when I gave you a story in the beginning of my series, I said God took me one day in a vision to heaven and he showed me this big um, cabinet, this big room where there's a lot of drawers and cabinets and he showed me in one cabinet when he opened it, when he opened it, he showed me things that he has predestined for my life. And he said, you don't have to lead an idle life. You don't have to accept what people are saying about you and against you. You don't have to believe what people are saying about you. This is who you are. Meaning that who you are is in God. It's not in man. So don't worry about what men are saying. Worry about what God is saying. This is why Peter in John chapter 3, in, in, in Luke chapter, in Luke uh, is it chapter 3, where Peter um, uh, saw Jesus and Jesus says to him, go into the deep, lower your nets. As soon as he did that, a miracle happened. A lot of fish they caught at a time they don't expect to catch anything during the day. But as soon as they caught the fish, so much fish, the Bible says immediately Peter stopped looking at the fish, moved his focus from the fish and he, you know, he was excited, but at the same time, he was overwhelmed with fear. And he looked at Jesus and he realized this is not the man as he knows man. And he looked at Jesus and says, go away from me, Lord. What do you want from me? And the Bible says, Jesus said to him, don't be afraid because today I will make you a fisher of men. And I'm saying to you, I'm introducing to you, God who says to you, don't be afraid. Don't care what people are saying. Don't worry. It is time for you to lift up your head. It is time for you to pump up your chest. It is time for you to believe in you. It is time for you to realize that you are not man after man's heart. You are not a man pleaser. You are a God pleaser because God created you for a reason. I want to pump passion into you today. I want to pump excitement into you today. I want to pump energy into you today that you know that man will bring you down, but God, mighty Jesus, God will give you power and energy to rise above everything. This has nothing to do with your church. This has nothing to do with your pastor. This has nothing to do with the congregation. This has nothing to do with anybody.
to say things to you. You are special. You are unique. You, you are different. Nobody's like you in the, the whole world. You are the only. They might look like you. They might speak like you. But they are not you. You are different. You are unique. And you know what you know. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hey, this is exciting to me as I am sharing with you. And in John chapter 8, the story uh, that I'm narrating to you, which says that um, Jesus calls unto his disciples and said, Be faithful to my word. Be faithful to my in my word and you will know the truth. If you read the drink your teeth in here, you, you drink this thing in, you, you drink it, you eat it, you eat the word of God. Bible says if you remain in it, remain in the word. Sometimes it will be difficult for you to remain, but you need to remain. Sometimes it's going to be tiring, but you need to remain. Sometimes it's going to be exhausting, but you need to remain. Sometimes the devil is going to bring, you know, excuses. The devil is going to bring uh, people to deviate you from the truth, but you need to remain because your life is depending on it. Hallelujah. And the Bible says once you dig in here, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And this is what it's about. It's about knowing the truth. And it's about setting, it you, setting you free. That's what you want. You want to be set free from thinking that you're not better. You need to be set free from thinking that you are not worth it. You need to be set free from thinking that you can't do it. You need to be set free from thinking that you are less, you are lower. We are not beneath, we are on top. The Bible says we are not under, but we remember, remember. Remember, you are special and you are unique. You've been placed where you've been placed for a reason. You might look around and see people with money around you and see people with big cars, people with big houses, people with great egos, and you realize that you are an ant in the midst of giants. But I want to tell you one thing. David felt like that one day, but he was remembered, reminded of what he did, what God did through him. He reminded um, King Saul, and he said to him, one day as I was tending my father's ship, there came a bear and snatched one of the um, one of the lambs. I ran after it, I took it and I killed it by my hands. And then came a lion. I also opened the mouth of the lion and killed it by my hands. And he says, the same thing that I did to the lion, the same thing that I did to the bear, I will do to this uncircumcised Philistine. And the whole world will know that there is God in Israel. The God of the armies of Israel will give this man to my hands. This is what he said. Remember, this is a 15-year-old boy and these are all soldiers. You know, you, you would have been uh, intimidated by them. You would have been afraid. Not even by Goliath, only by being in the midst of the armies of Israel. Because when you're talking of the armies of Israel, you're talking about strong, powerful men. And you're talking about men with stature. You're talking about the massive army. But this young boy at the age of 15, he came in the midst of all these men. And he looked at Goliath and he saw an end and he became... Because you see, let me tell you, let me give you a, another way of... Of, 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 of succeeding in your, I know this is another uh, series or talk I'm bringing. I just want to say to you, let me give you a way of looking at things. Because I said to you in a couple of days, as we're doing the seven days, that you need to change the way you look at things. If you want to unlock your potential, you need to be able to have a different way of looking at things. Pray to God. God, give me a different way. Give me a different view of what I see. Remember when Moses sent um, the, 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 um, 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 the, the inspectors to inspect Canaan. Uh, there were two teams. The first team came back to Moses and said, Yo, those peoples are giants. We are like locusts before them. But the second team where uh, Joshua was part of, where Joshua was leading, the second team came and said, Yes, they are giants. But the land is beautiful. Wow. And he looked at the land and said, it's beautiful. This is what God has given us. And immediately, Moses could differentiate between the two groups. The first group was afraid because they went there. They saw big giants. But the second group went also, excuse me, to the same place, but different views. 
It's like you're looking into the world. When you see the world, it intimidates you. It makes you scared. But now when you are in Christ, when you believe in God, when it is no longer you that matters, but God matters. You, you begin to have a different way of looking at things. Because, because of what God did through David. Well, David realized that it was not him who killed the lion. It was not his ability that made him kill the bear. Because he realized that the bear could have snatched him and, and you know, smite him or whatever. Uh, or, you know, um, um, kill him immediately. But he realized that God gave the bear to him and gave him strength and power over the bear and the lion. And he said, if God could do that, how much more this toothless Philistine? So I need you to look at the giants before you and realize that greater is the one who is in you than the one who is in the world. I need you to look at the fact that every time you submit CVs, you don't get a job. Every time other people submit CVs, they get jobs. But now I need you to pray for a different way of looking at this. Whenever you submit the CV, I need you to speak words. Words of faith. On that CV. I need you to believe that you already got the job, even though you don't get it. And if you don't get it, you submit again, say it again. The third time you don't get the job, you submit on say it again. Because remember what Peter did on the fishermen? They go out to the sea every night. Even though they don't get, but remember, they came back, they washed their nets, preparing to go again the following night. So they went there. They had lots, lots to lose, but they realized that if they lose a moment of fishing, they will lose even more. So today, I just want to speak to you about being in a position to hear and obey the words of God. And that is my closing today. I want you I want to speak to you about being in a position to hear and to obey. Because that's what it's about. It's about hearing and obeying the word of God. Jesus says, You say to me, Lord, Lord, and yet you don't do what I what I say. And he says, If you are my disciples, you do what I tell you, and the people will know that you are my disciples, even when you love one another. So do what he says. You see? Those two things. Hear and do. It's important to be a hearer of the word and be a doer of the word. I know I've said a lot of exciting things, but this is the most important one. I've said a lot of exciting things which excited you, but this is what it's about. Not this book, but the word of God that is inscribed in here. That's what it's about. The word of God. This whole series is about bringing you to believing the word of God. Believe it as if your life depends on it because it does. Believe it, read it, live it. You can even buy a podcast. You can even download podcast these days on your phone. Believe it the word. Because that's what it's about. Your life. You must be able to hear the word of God. You must be able to know where the voice of God comes from. You must be able to differentiate between a lot of voices that speak. Because there are people who are going to bring advices to you. Some are not from God. You must be able to differentiate. This is where a mentor comes in. This is where a mentor, somebody that you look up to, somebody that you can ask, somebody that you can, you know, um, refer difficult questions to, somebody who's going to walk the walk with you. And I'm saying, if you don't have that person, I'm here for you, wherever you are.
wherever you are. I'm just a telephone away. And there's a lot of brothers and sisters that can help you through this walk and this journey with the Lord. Know the words of the voice. You see, and, and in Isaiah 55 verse 9, let's quickly go there. Isaiah 55 verse 9 um, 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 tells us that, you know, um, God's ways are not our ways. So it's important that we allow God to lead and guide us. Verse 9 reads as follows. For as heaven is higher than earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So what you know and what you think you know is not enough. God's ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He has plans for us. He has bigger plans for us. A lot of successful people, if you spend most of your time around successful people, you will learn that they were not always successful. They had to work hard with what they have. They had to sacrifice. Sometimes they had to sacrifice relationships to be where they are. They had friends that they loved and respected, but due to the fact that they realized that their friends are pushing them away from God's plan for their lives. They are pushing them away from what they are planning or what they want for their lives. And when your friends come up early in the morning, they bring you beers. They bring you beers early in the morning and you realize that no. This is going nowhere. This is not the right train for you. This is not the right path for you. Can't wake you up in the morning with beers. In the morning, your mind is fresh. You need to exercise and get it and get that muscle working so that you can have ideas about how to make your life better. So that you can pray about those ideas in the morning. So that you can start a fresh, you can have a fresh start and have a good day. And when they wake you up in the morning with BS, they're trying to kill that muscle so that that muscle doesn't operate the right way. So I just want to say to you, pray to God for, for, for you know, for, for, for companions of your journey. Pray to God for people who can walk with you. People who are going to support you. People who are going to, you know, be there and, and, and clap hands for you and say you're doing right when you're doing right. But when you're not doing right, they, they are able to sit you down and, and correct you and help you um, towards the right path. Look at what Peter does. Peter, even though it was not easy and what Jesus said uh, did not make logic, didn't make sense. But he said, because of your word. Because of your word. We'll do it. And then he instructed the guys to lower the nets. And look what happened. Because of your word. I remember when Jesus was invited to a funeral. Together with his mother and his brothers. They went to a funeral in, um, in, uh, in John chapter 2. They went to a funeral in Cana. Of Galilee. And the Bible says um, the wine was finished. Not a funeral, so a wedding. They went to a wedding in Cana and the wine was finished. And his mother um, came to Jesus and said, they don't have wine. And Jesus immediately looked at her and said, what is it between me and you, woman? My time has not yet come. But his mother went in back to, immediately back to the organizers of the wedding. And she said to them, whatever he says, do. And that's the kind of obedience that I am um, teaching you about. I am encouraging whatever he says. It's not going to be easy. But whatever he says. Whatever. Obey the words of God. Whatever he says. You must do. Okay. I must look at my time. Uh, I, I still have about five minutes left. Let me, let me try and wrap up. With the five minutes that I have. Now. So here. Yeah. God says, my ways are higher than yours. My thoughts are higher than yours. So hear from God and be obedient. Before you do, make sure it's from God. Don't 
obedient to something that is not coming from God. Make sure that is coming from God. Be an action oriented person. But your actions must be governed or your actions must be led by obedience to God. Don't just for the sake of doing. Do it because God says you must do it. But remember, you need his covering. You need to be backed up by God. Peter and his colleagues did what Jesus told them. Unlocking your potential is not a spiritual exercise. After prayer, you need to do something. You can't just pray about it and expect that everything is going to be honky-dory. You need to pray about it, trust God, but you need to rise, shine. Amen? Wherever you are. If you need to be an entrepreneur, you don't sit back and pray and say, Lord, make me an entrepreneur. It's not going to come from heaven and boom, tomorrow you're an entrepreneur. It's going to have sleepless nights, tough decisions to make, cutting down on wasting some of your money, making sure that you pick up this habit of budgeting. You do things the different way. Same money, but a different way of using it. Because you have this goal of being an entrepreneur in the future. Hallelujah. So rise, go to the marketplace. Remember what Peter did. As soon as the Holy Spirit came down after the Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, he goes to the Pentecost, started preaching, because it was not going to come from heaven into the people, but it came from heaven. The Holy Spirit, they were all baptized. Tongues of fire. Uh, uh, were seen on them and they were all baptized by the Holy Spirit but then he had to go to the marketplace to give which is in him the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he started speaking verse 37 or 38 and people said to him what do you want us to do because they, they, you know they were touched they were moved and they, they were pained by what Peter said and he says repent and be baptized. Amen. So it's important that you realize. That um, it, it, it says so in verse, 40, verse 41. Let's quickly go there. In verse 41. In the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 41. It says let me read it for you. Um, so those who accepted his message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 people were added to them. You can't sit back and expect good results. You must do something. So after the Holy Spirit came upon them, uh, the Bible says Peter went out and he started preaching. He started proclaiming the good news to them. Verse 37. When they heard this, they were pierced. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. They were pierced to the heart. And the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? That's the question I want you to ask. What should I do? If you don't know what to do, don't slumber. Don't shy away and, and, and close the door in your room. Ask. Ask the right questions to the right people. What should we do? What should I do to make my life more meaningful? In verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. As many as the Lord our God will call. So I want to say to you, you have a promise. You have, remember we said you have a heritage, you have inheritance from God. But in order for you um, to, 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 to explore that or to expose it to you, yourself, you need to have a willing heart. You need to open up your heart. Allow Jesus to come in. And as soon as he comes in, you need to allow him to operate in your life, to use you the right way. Remember what we said, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I have been crucified. Jesus. It's no longer I who lives, but him lives in me. And when he is in you, he becomes the hope of glory. Amen. So in my closing today, I want to ask you questions. 
One, how many business ideas do you have which you've thought about, wrote on a piece of paper or a book, but did absolutely nothing about? How many business ideas go into the grave without being realized? We bury people every day. They had big ideas, but they were not willing to operate on them. You know, because someone failed to take action. It never happened. It never came to life. How many books, how many people thought about writing books and they had everything exposed to them, you know, to help them write those books, but they never did. They're sitting here around in the world saying, I wanted to do this. I wished I could do this. But the Lord didn't let me. No, let me bring it to you. The Lord allowed you. And he let you do it. And he gave you the ability to do it. But you didn't move an inch. You were too comfortable to move. You were too relying on God to come and lift you up. And make you do things. God is not like that. When he created you, he gave you a will. To choose. Amen. Remember what he says. Moses. In the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 30 verse 29. If I'm not mistaken. He says there. I place before you. A blessing and a curse. I place before you. Life and death. And then he says choose life. That you may live. You and your children. So I'm saying to you. You have good plans, but the problem is that you are an unwilling recipient to move and execute. How many songs you wrote, but those songs are still in your cupboard. Nobody sang them. You never sing, sang them. You never forwarded those songs to producers. You never sold them. They are there because you're doubting yourself. You're not sure. That you have the capability to do it. So I want to say to you in my closing. You're the only you. You're special. You're important. You're unique. By sitting idly where you are. You are actually blocking success. From a lot of people who have been given to you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. By keeping quiet as a preacher, you are actually, um, what is the word? You, you are actually, um, you know, um, um, you are actually stopping me from benefiting from what you have to say. You are depriving me of what you have to say. God has blessed you with resources. And you have all around you people who can benefit from those resources to the glory of God. Instead of saying my money, can't you say God's money? Instead of saying my car, won't you say God's car? Instead of saying my house, won't you say God's house? Because as soon as you change the way you look at things, you will begin to use these things to the glory of God. And the way to the glory of God is the only right way. Man, I'm going to miss you. I know a lot of you are watching. Some of you are going to watch later. Because a lot of um, um, testimonies that I received, a lot of phone calls and messages, people are saying, I didn't have time to watch when you were live. A lot of them, very few people watch when I'm, when I'm live. A lot of people come afterwards to say, thank you very much, Pastor, for speaking to us. And I want to say to you, 
You are not wasting your time to listen to this series because it's going to change your life as it is changing mine. So let me pray with you. Allow me to pray with you as I am closing. Thank you, Father, for the life of your servant. Thank you for the life of your child. Wherever they are right now, they, they are deep in thought, trying to find a way out, trying to find a purpose for themselves. And I pray, God, that you bless them. I pray that you visit them with your wisdom, that they are able to hear you in the midst of the noise that is around them. That they are able to take your words into their hearts. And be obedient to you. I pray right now for them wherever they are. And spiritually I am touching each and every one of them. By your grace I am reaching them where they are. They might have different needs, O oh God, but through your word, speak life into them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for being with me, walking with me, journeying with me this long. Today, we've reached the last day, the seventh day of the seven days, seven-part series of unlocking your full potential. Please continue to watch, like, the page, comment, give me your testimony. Let me know that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have questions. And please don't forget to share the video with anybody, any of your friends, or maybe in your timeline. Thank you very much and God bless you. I love you. Goodbye.